if you've got tubeless mountain bike tires like I have, you might have had trouble blowing them up and getting them to seat on the bead. Now I've seen these kind of DIY tubeless inflators being used on the internet and people seem to say they work straight away, but do they really? So I decided to build one uh, because seeing as I'm injured, fell off the mountain bike recently, I'm not riding. So my current rear tire, the Hutchison Griffiths is completely shredded. So I thought I'd put a, a fresh tire back on. So instead of just battling around with a track pump, I thought I'd make one of these little tubeless IED devices. So this is a one and a half litre, I think, uh, Schweppes bottle. Um, I don't know how much pressure it's designed to take, but we're gonna see how much we can get in it. So I've got two small holes in the cap, five mil holes, and two old Presta valves, which I've taken from old inner tubes with the locking nuts on top. And then a small bit of plastic pipe. This is four by six mil plastic pipe, which I stole off my Shimano uh, brake bleed kit and then just basically a small rubber band this is actually a, just a cut bit of inner tube that I use to hold the fold in the tube now when you fold the tube like that it actually makes a really good airtight seal and that just stops it coming undone and when you're ready to release your IED um, you just take that rubber band off and all the pressure comes out through that and that just pushes onto the presser on the bike on the bike wheel so I've seen people say these work really quickly how many times or how many goes do I need to actually get this to work? Let's see if it works. Now, is it safe to do something like this? Well, I think these these bottles are actually designed to take quite a bit of pressure, considering you know, when they're packed with carbonated fluids and then they get shaken up and they're in hot transport environments, you know, they must be able to take quite a lot of pressure. I don't exactly know how much, um, but to increase the hoop strength of the bottle, I've wrapped it in fiber tape, just kind of fiber packing tape, which is really strong in tension, um, and it's the hoop stress which is going to be the biggest stress in a thin walled pressure vessel you've got the axial stress acting on the cap and the end as well so i put a bit of light tape across the end just to brace that um, but this should be plenty good enough the first thing that will probably happen is a leak up here somewhere or maybe the cap will fly off the threads so I'll, when i use it i'll put a bit of tape around the cap but let's see if it works and how many goes it needs to work we're going to try the diy inflator no pressure in that tire at all, not seated. Let's close the inlet. That's my special tool. Fuck, it won't work. Okay, inlet closed. Attach the pump. Start building some pressure in the bottle. Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. All right, that's eighty psi in the bottle. Don't go any higher than that. Leave the pump attached. Fuck it. Three, two, one. Nope. Fucking hell. Right, so a few issues. It's clearly leaking out of here, um, even though I've screwed these down as hard as I can. So I'll put a bit of sealant in the bottle, some tire sealant, so that should bung up any holes. It's leaking on this bit of pressed valve thread on the pipe. So I'm just gonna whip a zip tie around that to make it a little bit tighter. And then it, it's holding like 80 PSI, but up to 100, it, it really leaks very fast. And I think I need over 100 actually to uh, get enough air in it very quickly. So just put a little zip tie on there. I'm not sure if that's gonna help, but there's a leak from there. No leak from there. Let's try and nip that up. Yep. What's that one? Right, we are 110. Three, two, one, go. Oh, so close. Right, we're holding steady at 90 psi. We're holding steady. Let's give it a few more pumps. 
Pump it. Pump it. That's 120 PSI. I've got my safety goggles on. Right, in three, two, one. It's leaking, but I think the bead, the bead is on. It's leaking from somewhere. Oh, we haven't quite seated it all the way around. A seat all the way around, so we're just gonna go again to 120. And it should be good. 40. 60. Get a good workout, even when I'm injured. Holding steady at 80, no leaks. But, there's a small IED on the floor. Coming up to 120. Okay, we'll call that a day at 120. In three, two, one. Up we go. Come on, seat. Seat, 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 seat. With some sealant, I reckon we'll be good. I've moved the tire around a little bit, just in case it's like gravity holding the bead off a little bit. So I've just twisted the tire a bit. Up to 180, and this time I'm going to try and disconnect the pump, so I definitely don't get any backflow into the pump. Right, that's 130. If I disconnect that. Do that valve up. Move that out of the way. All right, in three, two, take off the safety valve. Three, two, one. That sounded good. It's leaking. But I think it's seated. Pretty sure that's seated. We'll soon see. Yeah, pretty sure that bead's on. All right, the air stopped. Oh no, it looks like there's one section down the bottom here, which may not have sealed. Yeah, that hasn't sealed. Fuck it. Right, we're sitting around 130. I'm gonna remove the pump. So I've got no blowback. And we're nearly sealed now. Take off my safety device. Right, in three, two, one. I think with some sealant, that might go. Right, just to get this last bit to seat, I've added a bit of sealant to the tire. I'm gonna go for 140 PSI, 10 bar, 10 atmospheres. Right, 140 odd. We're gonna take off the safety release mechanism. In three, two, one. Oi, that went up pretty damn hard. I would say that's success. And it's holding 30, bang on. So that sealant did the trick. Cheers, thanks for coming.